Now we've talked about a lot of pollinator plants uh, here in this plot tour, but this is Phacelia, and I would call this, this is the queen of all pollinator plants. It's, it's just, there's nothing better at attracting insects, uh, the, the beneficial pollinators, the predator type insects. Uh, it's highly, highly attractive. Uh, and, and, and one of the reasons is, is color. Uh, typically, the, the blue and the purple flowers attract more insects than, than white and yellow do. And so it's one of the few things that we have that have really bright, vibrant colors. Uh, but it's also just extremely fragrant. Uh, it, it's just one of the best plants uh, for attracting beneficial insects. So, again, this strip is in a monoculture. Uh, we would want to see this in a mix. And we'll see that as we look at some of the mixes we have here. Uh, but we would want to see a pound or two of this in a mix, maybe a little bit more if it's strictly a pollinator type mix. Uh, Phacelia, it, it's, I've seen cattle graze it. It's, it's probably not the greatest grazing plant. Uh, and and it's, it's pretty expensive, so I wouldn't necessarily use it as a forage plant. But cattle will eat it. Um, and, and it's got a very fine, very uh, delicate root system that really does some things in that top inch or two of soil. Yeah. The, the root system looks almost like cobwebs. I've actually seen it growing on top of the soil surface, especially in a heavy clay. Um, and it, it really changes the water infiltration rate because the first, the first layer that rainfall has to penetrate is that surface interface that it has with the air. And, and Facilia does more at altering that first inch of growth than any other cover crop I'm, I'm aware of. And that root system also has some uh, uh, a reputed ability to make potassium more available. So kind of what buckwheat does for phosphorus, Facilia does for potassium. Now one thing about Facilia, we haven't, at least up here in Nebraska, we haven't had a lot of luck getting this to bloom when we plant it in July or August. I, I, I don't know if we just run out of days or if it's day length sensitive. Uh, possibly as you move south it might do more. But if you want to get this to bloom like what you're seeing here, you really need to be planting this you know, in, in April, give or take. Uh, probably a May planting could still work, but you start getting into the summertime. Uh, it is a cool season plant, so it's not going to like the heat of summer nearly as well. And something about the day length of, of the, the late summer and early fall, we just don't see it flower very much in the fall. Yeah. This and buckwheat, and of course buckwheat likes the warm, a bit more warmer temperatures than this. But those are the two biggest nectar and pollen producers amongst all of our cover crop species here.